Hello, good evening, everyone. My name is Architect Gunit Singh Khurana. On behalf of Team Archi Student, I welcome you all for today's session. I would like to thank our esteemed guests of this session, Architect Apurva Bose Datta and Architect Sandeep Sharma. Architect Apurva Bose Datta is an author, award-winning architectural journalist, curator, and editor based in Bangalore, India. Her professional journey of 15 years has been global collaborations with multimedia publication houses, uh, journal uh, houses, firms, organizations, and educational institutions affiliated with architecture, design, and building. Apurva has been persistently working towards increasing the visibility of architectural writing in India. She is also involved in conceptualizing and conducting an online certified course on architectural writing. She has been invited by the Australian and Finland government to represent the Indian delegation in international media. Visits of architectural writers in Melbourne and Hel Helsinki representatives. Her book, Architectural Voices of India, a blend of contemporary and traditional ethos has received acclaim and wide coverage in media. So architect Sagit Sharma is an architect based out of Chandigarh. Architecture is his profession. He is partner in SD Sharma and Associates, a known firm in Chandigarh. He has been conferred honors doctorate by Berkeley University. His architecture is termed as cubist modernism and is highly influenced by Chandigarh and uh, sustainable architecture. He is widely published and featured in prestigious journals in India and abroad. He practices sustainable architecture. He is a winner of 10 awards in architecture, significant being the Greha Exemplary Performance Award for his project in Coimbatore. Three projects awards for sustainability and various others for the best structures to name a few. He has earned many momentous titles such as one of the hot 100 architects, famous 50 and most inspiring architects of India in various books and journals. I would request all the participants to kindly write down their questions in the chat box. We'll be taking up questions and answers in the end of the session. Also would like you to subscribe to our channel for the latest updates. You can also join our YouTube, uh, YouTube group, Google group, or WhatsApp groups. Links are in the description. So without any further delay, I would like to invite architect Apurva Bosdatta to take over the session and have a dialogue on architecture, life, and me, uh, written by architects and Sharma. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Guneet, for the introduction. It's a pleasure being here today with all of you. A very warm good evening to everyone. This dialogue is special to me because it takes me back to some nostalgic memories. I still remember, it was almost 10 to 12 years ago, that I received probably one of the first books autographed by an architect, and surprisingly written by him too. I was delighted. It had just been a couple of years since I had stepped into this almost unknown field of architecture writing. And here was this book that was written by an Indian architect, which was rather new in the scenario then, and probably now too, where architects in India hardly wrote. Even if they wrote, it was on their projects. But this was a memoir encapsulating a journey that didn't only dwell on the past or on the present, but also tried to glimpse into the future. I finished the book rather quickly, made notes because though the book was a light read, but there were quotes in the book that were deep, engaging, philosophical, thought provoking statements that compelled you to question, emotions that were relatable, and of course, learning that was conveyed with great subtlety. That book was Architecture Life and Me. And today, as this remarkable book is on its journey completing 12 years, I have the pleasure to discuss it with its author, the multi-talented, versatile, multifaceted 
architect Sangeet Sharma, whose distinct style of writing on architecture has celebrated the blurring of architecture and life. My earliest memories of connecting with Sangeet sir dates back to probably during 2005 or six. So it's been a good 15 years, but I must say that since then every second year, if not every year, I've got to know of a new talent that Sangeet sir has cultivated. Besides being an award-winning architect, known for his cubist modernism style and spaces that are economic conscious and optimum, his multitasking abilities aren't a secret to anyone. I remember once when I asked him about his multitasking and immaculate time management skills, he told me that he works in mental shifts and his brain has a biological alarm, a definite MCB which switches on and off. But as per me, the best part about him is that even when multitasking a plethora of things, he doesn't let his mind and exuberance them even for a second. Sangeet sir, what a pleasure to be connecting with you on this platform. And uh, such a pleasure and honor for me to be talking to you about this book. For some reason, I was never able to write about architecture and life over the years, which I do regret because you do know that I thoroughly enjoyed reading it, but I'm delighted that I have got this bigger opportunity to talk about it now. So formally, congratulations to you on the completion of its 12 years, and especially for the fact that the relevance of the book, even after these years, hasn't mitigated a bit. So, sir, you, are, uh, you, you would need to unmute yourself. Thank you, Purva. Thank you so much for a fantastic introduction. I'm humbled and I'm excited and as, as, as you said, exuberated. I know, I'm, I'm also excited too. So sir, tell me 12 years to architecture, life and me. Uh, life and me. While you probably envisaged how you wanted the readers to respond to your book, I want to ask you today that when you reflect on the last 12 years since the book was published, what has the book meant for you? How has it affected you and things around you? Um, Purva, the very fact that Apurva is talking to me after 12 <laughs> years, I'm excited. <laughs> this is the biggest uh, gift the book has given to me that uh, a person of your caliber and talent is, is talking to me after 12 years. You are making me go all red. <laughs> really, truly. And um, uh, it, it's, been a, it's been a fantastic journey, Purva. And uh, we have been connected and you have seen your works. You've seen your, I've seen your latest book. You, you do so well. So, uh, uh, you know, the very fact that a person like you is trying to uh, interview me after 12 years on this book is making me a little nervous, but I try to behave myself. Uh, okay. Uh, journey of, uh, of this book, this is behind me, behind my eyes, in front of my eyes, is always, after five years, it still is my favorite of Urwa. And uh, I, think, I think when you write something or speak something or do something out of uh, uh, sheer uh, concern about its product and not any, any return or not in any selfish motive or not to impress or, or not to get carried away, that is, the, is the, the most beautiful thing which comes. And, and, and if you see the uh, beautiful lyrics of Kabir and Burlesha and Rahim and all those people, Khalil Gibran, um, including and, and, and even, even Shakespeare, and they, they wrote out of pure emotion. They wrote out of sheer joy of writing, sheer joy of conveying. So this, Apurva, is a sheer joy of a child of a simple child who wants to write. Okay, I think, okay, I think that's beautifully put. So, uh, you know, since you already say that it's the sheer joy of a, a child who, wants, who wanted to write. So let me go back to the process of, you know, how all it happens, uh, happened because uh, memoirs and architecture, especially by architects in India, was seldom heard of 10 to 12 years back. And uh, you decided to pen it just after a decade in the profession. And I remember your preface of the book where you mentioned that the book was a culmination of many years of thoughts and musings. 
but I am sure there must have been a defining moment or a defining memory where you decided to pen it. So what led you to work on this book? Please take us through that entire journey. I uh, joined my father uh, in practice and, uh, uh, you know, working with an architect of repute. When you join an office, then he's no more a father. He's, he's, he's <laughs> the boss. <laughs> so that's one thing. Secondly, when you are getting into a new job, a new profession, I was trying to relate it. I was trying to understand, although I had mentors, a father, gurus, good teachers who tell me what it is. But I think unless you satisfy yourself uh, into the direction of what you are doing, you are not uh, giving your 100%. So I was trying to analyze. One. Secondly, I was trying to put myself in a situation where I had to, I had to sort of grow, I had to believe in something. See, I wanted to, you know, uh, 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 relate my profession with all other things, with all other arts. I wanted to, you know, uh, dwell on things which were, which, were, which were more important rather than just bricks and concrete. Uh, so I think th th there must have been some, uh, some um, uh, pinch in me which uh, made me write down or take some notes. So this book is a, is, is, a, is a process of unwinding, process of learning, process of understanding myself. And a lot of people ask me that you want to write uh, a, a memoir after uh, 10 years, only a decade in profession, you're not very old. I'm not very old even now. So, but, uh, but, uh, so, but, so I said, no, Mamar doesn't mean that when you are, you know, 80 year old, you want to write something with the past. I am writing the present. True. This is a memoir which is talking about my present. It's not the past. It's what I have understood and it's what which I want to uh, talk about it. So, it's architecture, life, and me, because it talks about architecture, life. And me. So three things take place in this book. That's why it's a very uh, highly emotionally, uh, you know, quoted book when all, all the chapters are there. True. In fact, I have always found the title, you know, so very intriguing because, you know, the title is extremely simple. As in on the surface, there seem to be no less to it. But if you ponder yeah. for a while, you find actually that it's multi-layered because, you know, the readers realize that there is a sacred thread connecting the subject of architecture, life in general, and an architect. So that's wonderful. But uh, I want to know, since you spoke about unwinding and you spoke about a lot of uh, emotional uh, things happening during um, writing this book, um, I want to know that since you were going all out with your emotions, because obviously this is a memoir, was there ever a conscious decision that there would be episodes that should not be spoken about in the book? Or was there only a conscious decision of what needed to be enumerated in the book? As I said that uh, it was a very uh, uh, childlike, uh, you know, uh, uh, explosion of an emotion. So I wasn't pondering upon the what I'm going to write now and the next, or what's the chapter, it wasn't contrived, you know. Now when I move to fiction, I contrive things, I make a story, there's no story. So, there, so the best part is the book is all uh, in different chapters and I talk about uh, uh, my, my growth, my youth, my studies, uh, how, 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 what to talk about writing, about my parents, about other arts, so whatever, I woke up to, I wrote it. And I tell you the truth, Apurva, that uh, very little has been edited. Unlike, you know, we, we write, then edit, write, and edit. So when you're writing straight out of the mind, and I, I remember I used to just walk and talk, walk and talk, and somebody else used to type and that. So it, it just came, it flow, because I think the, the lines were being created in the mind first. And this is what I do even now. So the first draft is here, and then it comes out through the heart, and, and that's what it is. So this particular book, being my first book and a first attempt to uh, uh, nonfiction writing, uh, so it contains of various aspects of life. A, I am not bored. B, my reader is, is, is not bored. 
because suddenly you see this chapter arts on writing on movies on eating on parents on growth so you are as you said you are glued to it so that was my intention and so it's it's just a, it's just a flow it's just direct flow i loved it wonderful in fact, I, hmm. in fact apurva uh, i mean now i feel that i am uh, declining as a writer i was a better writer when i wrote this book yeah i mean it's how sad <laughs> i don't know what to do I think that that only happens uh, with age. I'm not trying to say that you're old, but it it just happens that <laughs> <laughs> with age there are so many hesitations and so many things uh, come out. But I like the fact that you say said that it is very less edited because I also believe that when you actually write from the heart, uh, nothing really has to be edited because it's all 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 the truth. So that's all true. So sir, so you spoke about uh, you know a few of your chapters, but. I want to quote some specific portions of the book that can probably give our viewers a sneak peek into the book and connect further to your thoughts on architecture and how it has connected to your life too. So quoting you in the book, architecture becomes a craft when we think of walls alone, becomes an art when we think of beautifying the walls and becomes a passion when we think of the space between the walls. so you would have probably started realizing quite early in your life the importance of how spaces need to communicate because you were born to the legendary architect shivdar sharma this is also validated by a chapter in the book where you speak on the need to appreciate intangible spaces so do you have any anecdote to share from your foundation years in life where you started realizing the importance of spaces or something that you might have mentioned in the book too did i write, did i i i i um uh, i wrote those those, those lines did uh, i yes sir <laughs> <laughs> oh, not bad yeah not bad okay uh yeah for what uh you know early days is is what uh, makes the foundation in in the mind of a human being i think uh, when we were young and i used to see my father working all night and sharpening of those pencils and blueprints all over the place and uh, uh so so i th- i think right from the d- day one we were watching drawings and uh, and there are pictures of me uh, uh lost those pictures pictures of me making houses of the bricks uh so uh, i i i think uh, uh integrating uh spaces uh integrating the the forms the texture the color uh began quite early uh, subconsciously and uh, when i tried to write about it so i think i was definitely thinking of some past and uh, uh, the influence is great because i, I think the three things which which uh, transformed me was uh, uh, of course my father's uh, uh, work which i saw then the growth of chandigarh because we were we were bought up here born bought up here so the the something the things were all being moved and and were building and uh, thirdly i think uh, the, the 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 pursuit of books was always there in my family my dad used to read a lot my mother reads and, and writes poetry herself and uh, so we were we were f- from that uh, semiliterary uh, uh, family so uh, uh, i think those things took place and and uh, thankfully we were not uh, uh, that financially uh, sound that i had uh, you know games and gadgets to play with in my in my childhood so I was playing with rocks and stones and bricks and i i think i'm very fortunate for for for, for not having certain things which improved me mentally <laughs> true i i i i do understand but uh, since you know we we are just talking about spaces i should also speak about the importance of light and silence in your architecture which have been some of the defining elements of your design and it's probably also an inspiration from master architect louis kant's work to whom you you have dedicated a chapter in the book yeah. and in reference to studying the i m endabad campus designed by him you write these beautiful lines so they are written by you <laughs> in the chapter <laughs> and uh, i am reading them out um you say maybe the silence was in the movement of light but i found that the dance of this articulated light spoke very eloquently 
Perhaps the silence was in the simple and defined geometry, but that was not to be. The simple geometry was vehemently verbal. In all its thunderous dialogues, the master drew silence and conclusions. It seemed that the dialogue was complete for silence to ensue. So I think it, it's, it's just written beautifully. And in the above, uh, in these lines, you completely speak about emotions in architecture, about how these intangible aspects of life, silence can almost define spaces. And I think that's a way of reading architecture, which many few possess. And in case of architectural writers, how to read architecture is a very important aspect. And uh, since you have a chapter in the book on how to read a building, can you precisely describe your way of reading a building or what's the way a writer should read a building? Yes, Purva. Uh, see, essentially, uh, uh, before this book, I, 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 uh, I, there's a book of uh, poetry which I published, actually. True. So I think essentially I'm a poet. So when I'm writing prose, uh, I, I tend to uh, unintentionally get into poetic, uh, uh, poetic silence, poetic meter, maybe. Um, but that's not contrived. I mean, it just happens. And I, and I, and I allow it to flow. See, uh, at the end of it, you know, we, are, we uh, writers to, uh, try to develop a, a, a style of our own which goes into it. Uh, so what I was talking about, uh, those lines of shadows and silences, uh, um, um, I really, uh, when I see those beautiful sciography on those buildings of Louis Kahn, or for that matter, any other great master. Any great architecture speaks of the same language. So I think when I saw that and I uh, learned it, I enjoyed it and wrote it. Uh, I always say that architecture is more silent than eloquent. And uh, so I think if you, if you hear that, if you feel that, you learn to appreciate better. Well, then you are, you know, uh, uh, there's a there's a halagola in architecture. There is a, a chaos which we create in, into architecture, which never happens. So this silence was uh, something which I felt, wrote, and still doing today. Okay, I we lost the three words. I hope you didn't put yourself on mute, sir. No, not at all. Huh. it's okay. It's okay. Okay, so there is another chapter which is called Teaching Architecture. And there you speak about three kinds of instruments of knowledge in man. There is instinct, there is reasoning, and there is inspiration. And I think that's a complete thinker's writing. Can I ask you to elaborate on it a bit for our viewers? Uh, yes, Apurva. Teaching architecture, I believe, is most difficult. And I always say in my talks that uh, uh, teachers in architecture are not to be respected. Not to be respected. They are to be revered. Worshipped. They are to be right. revered because how can they ignite that spark to design something, to create something? I mean, we go there with our dead minds into schools of architecture and those teachers, you know, they juggle you out of, their, of your, your innocence, your ignorance and, ignorance, and then make you, you know, think like an architect. So it's, the, it's a very difficult job. So I think teaching architecture, I used to always, uh, you know, we students used to make fun of our teachers in school. We all did and we all do. Uh, but then I realized, my goodness, it was a blunder. I should have done it because now when I go and teach sometimes, I realize it's a difficult job. So intuition, is important. We are we are going ahead with the with the with the syllabus syllabi, and we want to just uh, take that and throw it into the minds of the students. It doesn't happen because when we teach architecture, we are trying to unite ourselves with the listener, with the with the student, and that's how we can impart that knowledge. Because knowledge is very dry. So unless we're doing it with intuition, unless we're doing it with emotion, I don't think we can teach anything, leave aside a beautiful, noble thing like architecture. I realized it. So because I'm realizing all this, I'm writing all this. So it's my, it's my I think, uh, analysis, inner self, a realization, understanding, 
at that level where I, where, where I was at that time. But as you rightly said, I myself read it sometimes and uh, not bad. I find it, <laughs> I, I find it, uh, I, it was as if somebody else wrote through me. I was only an instrument. So I'm thankful to the Lord. No, I think um, not only the quotes in your book, they are very motivational, but, uh, you know, whatever you, uh, you say, whatever you just, uh, you know, spoke about teachers, it, it's so motivating. Um, and I'm sure if there are students, uh, you know, who are uh, viewing um, this dialogue, they will be so, so inspired by what you said. Um, you. Okay, so I also wanted to ask you that, you know, we, we only have a handful of architects in India who give equal importance to their designing and writing. And uh, evidently, you are one of them. And you just spoke about the chapter in the book, which is um, titled on writing, where you express what writing means to you. In fact, you even quote George Bernard Shaw in that um, chapter. I want to connect this passion of yours for writing with architecture because I have a personal um, benefit also because for someone like me who has taken to architectural writing as a full time profession and I'm well versed how the subject has fared, especially in India. I can safely say that you were one of the first in the country to acknowledge, recognize and encourage professional architectural writers. You have awards for architectural writers, awards for literature through the A3 Foundation which you have so passionately nurtured over the years. Um, in that case, I two things that I want to know. Why do you think architectural writing is not a mainstream profession yet in India? And I'm sure the reason why you constituted these um, awards through the A3 Foundation also had to do something. And I must say that I, I feel very proud whenever uh, I'm addressed as the first awardee of the A3 Architectural Journalism Award. That's been like a <laughs> high point in my, you know, career and a lifelong memory. So, so what, what are your views on the same? Purva, uh, you are a winner and uh, we always uh, identify the best and I did no favor. You were very good right from day one. So we identified you and we became uh, damn good friends. By the way, your uh, uh, dress matches with the cover of my book. Yeah, that's very but, interesting. Uh, obviously, I, I wrote it. I wore it too because we were talking about your book. It does match, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, that was the entire, entire intention. I was waiting for you to notice that. I'm so happy you noticed that. <laughs> It's beautiful. Oh God, that's fantastic. Uh, Purva, writing uh, was quite a, a, at a nascent stage when uh, I started writing. I think my only and my own idol is is, uh, is Gautam Bhatia. He was the only one who was written at the time. Um, he used to write satire and he's a great writer. Uh, besides that, I, I, I found writers uh, writing on, as you said, on their own projects and uh, and something which is very high flown, very uh, you know, philosophizing, intellectualizing. Uh, I could never understand much. And uh, the first thing which I said. So uh, I, as being a writer, I wanted to find fellow writers, find students, inspire them. So my awards in A3 Foundation has, yes, uh, generated a moment. And uh, uh, I really am proud that you're one of the, one of the winners. Uh, so going into the 15th year of this uh, uh, year, the foundation is celebrating. Uh, so uh, uh, I think the motive was selfish. I wanted to find fellow professionals who could write, make a big group, and talk about it and promote it. I mean, I'm sure there are people, there are architects who want to convey. See, we all have a story. And Anapurva, you and me are not professional, uh, you know, writers per se that we survive on writing. So we have a story, we convey it, but but that purity of uh, of language, that grammar, that uh, epistemology, and, and other things. So we need help. So my idea was, if I can find a writer, if he or she needs help assistance, editing, promoting, we are there to help you. But I found it difficult task and for Purva, this is a, this is a Rupa publication. And I, I remember going to him and he says, uh, Sangeet, this is not our cup of tea. 
what's all this? It's, just, it's neither a, a biography, it's neither an a, a autobiography. And uh, who is going to read architecture and who, who's interested in your life and all that? Uh, so I said, fine, gentlemen, I'll leave it here. So after about three, four months, his editor calls me, he says, we, we found this very, uh, you know, uh, the word which, uh, which he used was, it's a very childlike writing. And, uh, and we like the simplicity. Uh, we like the purity of it. So I think we'll publish it. So getting it, get your first, first book by Rupa was the big delight. And uh, oh, so it was done. Uh, and, uh, but I thought that if I'm going to find people who want, who want to write, I would like to guide them. So we started this uh, writing promotion and uh, we found so many writers, young writers who, and, and, you, and you have been you know, promoting uh, architecture writing and you are, you are uh, showing direction to people, which I think uh, I could not, and you're doing it very nicely. So uh, secondly, I was myself in anguish that why there are no more books like this. Where were they when I was a student? Where was my, my pie of inspiration? Why was I not inspired? If th this book became uh, Purva uh, as in some colleges in South India as a part of a theory of design, a textbook, mm. because, because it, it, it made them realize and it, it, it showed them the path, the direction. Where was it when I wanted it? So that's why I said there should be more people doing it. There should be more people writing it. I mean, we are not here in isolation. We want to write in a collective measure. If I am a good author, uh, there must be 100 good authors so that we can share, we can debate, we can exchange. There's no point of me, me being a good author alone and sitting in secluded corner in, in Chandigarh. It doesn't happen. So let us all grow. Let us all be, because writing is something which everybody wants to convey. And I, I want to establish that architects can write because they are true, gifted, creative people. And communication writing is a second language to us. If you can't do it, then a little bit of success is delayed, not denied, delayed. So therefore my quest to find writers. I think that's beautiful. And I think the bigger issue has been that there have been architects, you know, who have been writing, but very less in India. What, yeah. Whatever books we were referring to all this while, even now, yeah. most of the books yeah. are overseas. So, okay. so it's wonderful to have something in India which uh, promotes architectural writing. So, sir, I know you also mentioned that, you know, the book, uh, this book, Architecture Life in Me, has uh, been a, a part of the course in theory of design in a few colleges. Are there any specific reactions of readers that you remember till date? Do you find readers coming today, uh, coming up with new observations on the book? Something that you would like to share with all of us? Uh, I think the, I, I, I received the biggest uh, beautiful compliments when I wrote this book. And uh, more criticism in my, in my new books, but the compliments were, were there in this book. And because they could relate, they, they said, okay, sir, we, we are looking for this phrase. Uh, they all said that we wanted this as piece of inspiration. As you also said, that there's something which moved you. And, uh, you know, it, 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 it's, so when somebody tells you that I read this line of yours and I was inspired, it makes you so happy, Apurva. I'm sure you, you also now share this. Uh, emotion because people tell you, Purva, you've written so beautiful. I'm so happy, and uh, you have made uh, so many top architects of India, India feel happy and proud by publishing their interviews. So uh, it's a more difficult job than my my job. So and one of the biggest compliments was a first year girl from uh, some institute in in Tumkur or, or somewhere. She comes and tells me that uh, I have read it about ten times, fifteen times, and uh, she has kept it in a place where her other books uh, of um, mythology and religion are kept. So I, I think it was, it was, a, it was the greatest, uh, uh, I think the greatest gift. It, it was, I was moist when I was listening to this on telephone and I never met her. 
and she says it's, it's a part of that peace where it's kept in front of uh, uh, the, uh, the the deities of gods. I mean, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that that means I could shake something out of somebody's heart and give them so much of joy, so much of joy that they said yes, this found something. So it's a moment of eureka moment. I found it. I found it. I know that's beautiful and that's actually so sacred also when you know someone yeah. says like that. So the other thing that I also noticed in the book as I actually noticed in all your other books is that your illustrations are always very skillfully used in the book. The focus always stays on the text but I remember we were once discussing when you said that you use the illustrations as a prop to your text. So how do you go about balancing the text and illustrations? Is there any organized way of doing it or is it just, you know, you just feel like doing it and... Uh... Uh, Purva, as I said, there are uh, multiple MCBs. True. And sometimes, kabhi kabhi wo short, short circuit ho jata hai. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, while I'm writing, uh, my hand begins to, you know, try to illustrate that in terms of a sketch. So, uh, I think I sketch to understand my own writing better. And uh, and when I uh, sketch it as it is, I would like to keep it uh, along with it so that uh, when a reader reads it, uh, he also, you know, uh, it's, it's like a vetting of a design, you know, you are trying to say, okay, it, it's, it's proof, it's, 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 it's validated, it's, I, I like it. So I think a sketch is a good prop. And uh, I use it even, even in, my, in my fictions now, even in my castles in the air, I've used it. So I, I, I believe being an architect, I have a better authority to convey through words and through lines, through images. So I use all them, amalgamate them, put them in a, in, in a, a beautiful pie and serve it baked, hot baked. Wonderful. In fact, you know, what you said, it just uh, reminded me of another sentence that I read in the book. It said that, uh, you said that, there is a strange relation between the mind, heart and hand. As the mind thinks, the heart draws uh, while the heart, uh, sorry, the hand draws while the heart approves. So yeah. that, uh, you know, uh, uh, totally uh, aligned to what you just said. Um, so I think we are nearing, um, because we have to take in question, but... Uh, the last important question that I have to uh, definitely ask you, Sangeet, sir, because whenever I speak to you, you always have so many plans what to do next, whether in terms of architecture or writing. And I would like to share, share here with our viewers that this is just one of the books architect Sangeet Sharma has authored. There have been so many more, including architectural aesthetics, hospital architecture, corps, capital, castles in here. Sangeet, sir, you should let me know if I'm missing out on any. <laughs> Um, no, you're saying, you're saying it right. Yeah. In fact, you yeah. have this chapter in Architecture Life and Me where you speak about books being your best friend too. So please yeah. tell us what are the new books in line? Are there any future plans for this title specifically? Or do you plan to come up with another memoir as someone even asked you after maybe a few more years? Uh, yeah, Purva, thank you. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I keep on changing the genre. Unlike the authors, you know, they get like actors they get typeset authors also get typeset so i make a a new book every time like i ventured into this then i ventured into uh, my new book castles in the air is a, is a satire on architecture and uh, i always tell uh, in my in my talks that if you want to become an architect read castles in the air uh, read architecture life in me if you don't want to become an architect read castles in the air and it's you find the profession so horrible, practice of profession so horrible, not architecture. Architecture is divine. I mean, it's, it's noble. So I cut the profession into bits. So I am keeping on experimenting. Then I wrote on Chandigarh, Corpse Capital. But again, I'm taking about five to seven architects on a tour, including Mr. B. Vidoshi and uh, Sario Huja, one or, two, one or two Spanish architects, speaking to my own father. So I Right. I think I want to educate through entertaining. I mean, I'm not going to teach somebody. I mean, I don't know much. Uh, how, how can I teach somebody? But there is a definite way to make a person smile while reading. That's my genre. People ask me, sir, what's your genre? I said, I have no genre. 
I just want when somebody's reading, there's a constant smile on his face. He's liking it. He's enjoying it. I mean, it's not a it's not a textbook. It's not something which you have to you know mug and and write it at the next day as a, as, as an examination. It's something which you have to enjoy. I've 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 talked to people that there are there are uh, teachers uh, uh, you know uh, as so many teachers even. Uh, but I'm saying one day he I started a book, your book, uh, Cops Capital from Amritsar in a book, and I was laughing all the way, and people were looking at me and laughing. So it was that kind of a thing. So a lot of people are attached to this, and I, I think I bring in an element of joy. So that's my genre. So after this, Sapurva, I'm writing two books. Of course, I can't do without architecture, but uh, they are hardcore fiction. I'm not going to reveal you the content as yet, and it's a secret. It's going to be out in about three months' time, and it's going to be will, very, very enjoyable. We will have another, another time. Yes, yeah, sure. Yes, yeah, <laughs> sure. so please go on. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. I but mean, you know, uh, go on, go on. Sorry. No, I, I just said that. Uh, so, the two books I'm writing simultaneously. Uh, so one is uh, both are fiction, but both are on the life of an architect, but in a very different way. So, so it you know it, it revolves around uh, of certain uh, period and it revolves around architect, but not the usual story of an architect or, or Frank Wright or Kabuzi. It's something different, as always. Over to you. I know, but uh, sir, you know, you make it sound also easy, but you know, architecture is a serious profession and to write yeah. a book which uh, makes people laugh in architecture, it's so difficult and you just, you know, do it so effortlessly. So thank you, um, thank you. and uh, you know, I must also take this platform to specially thank you for the initiatives you have taken to recognize architectural writing in the country. Um, I remember I remember when in 2009, I was receiving the award from SD Sharma Sir in Chandigarh. I said the following lines and I'm going to repeat them because they actually connect back to the book we are discussing, which is Architecture, Life and Me. Uh, so these were my words. Architecture, Life and Me has a beautiful quote, uh, which has remained etched in my mind, which says that buildings must have a silent narrator that does all the talking, that must hold your hand and take you along the journey while narrating all those violent flushes of the heart that made the architecture of that building come alive. So as an architectural journalist, I really believe it is this silent narration that we must pick up and write about. And it is we architectural writers who actually can design this narrative further. So Sangeet sir, I have to thank you for opening many new ways through the book for everyone to see, read and interpret um, architecture. And uh, though you do mention in the book that, um, you know, you follow the philosophy of Buddhism where detachment and the spirit of renunciation is one of the greatest characteristics. But I think everyone would like to learn from you how to stay detached and yet stay so attached to everything that you do, whether it's architecture, writing, poetry, music, and so many other things that you're so well versed in and you, uh, you just spoke about. So that's been Thank a wonderful, you so much. That's been a wonderful dialogue. And I think, Guneet, you, would you like to come in? I think he has some questions or something. Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Sagit, sir, for, for enlightening us with all your knowledge about architecture in basic and uh, giving us insights about your book. And I congratulate you for your 12th anniversary of the book, Architecture, Life and Me. And, uh, Thank you, I'm sure, and I am sure the coming project of yours, which you have been discussing, is going to be a great success again. So uh, I, have, I have two quick questions with me. Uh, I'm sure you have uh, answered them uh, uh, before as well, but I would like you to uh, give a brief uh, about this. What encouraged you to write this book in particular? It's by uh, Namni. Uh, my own uh, growth and my insecurities, my non-understanding of the profession uh, to start with, uh, my, uh, you know, that uh, strength to connect myself with the profession and all other professions around it. So it was my my desire to find the correct path to know myself, to know my profession. So that was the point. 
right sir so next question is how does one create a niche in the style of writing architecture in mainstream readership it's by uh, uh, i think sudendra teja uh good question i think you create a niche by constant writing and uh, i think uh, uh, apurva bose uh, is 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 a fine person to tell you this and she takes classes on on and and, and courses you should learn that but yes start writing the only way to write is to start writing so don't think much if you have it in you just write even if you don't have it in you still write and you will be successful very well said sir Uh, it, it says uh, when you when you start pen pen down your uh, activities or your thoughts uh, you you get encouraged a lot so that's a very perfectly great thought so uh, i have a very basic question again uh, which says that uh, sir i am pursuing architecture but i also love to uh, i i also love to do some architectural journalism so is there any uh, is there any particular course which i can attend or uh, uh, can you guide apurva <laughs> apurva is the person she is the person she she is taking courses in architecture writing join instantly yeah so man, i i would request you to just uh, give a brief about what what course you are taking up so that students can learn out of it Okay, so yeah, I, yeah. I I have been in this uh, profession for past fifteen years, and I have realized that the need to train uh, train uh, that the need to train in architecture writing is very very important because that's something which is not a part of our curriculum. So all this while I have been um, doing workshops, I have been also visiting colleges for electives and everything. But because the lockdown has happened, so for the past I think three months, I have been doing an online course on architectural writing. which is the which is the six week course and in around 12 to 14 hours of interaction with the mentor and um, i've already conducted two batches uh, in fact i finished the second batch um, just last saturday and the third batch is going to start from 21st of november and if anyone is interested maybe you can um, just contact me um, on my website it's apurvabos.com Uh, we are actually nearing the uh, we have already almost the seats are filled so maybe two or three seats are filled so if you are in a hurry <laughs> write to me and maybe you can register for the course too i want to register i want to register <laughs> myself Sunny, one seat for me you should oh. you should come and you should also also teach everyone including me <laughs> i i i would also like to enroll myself <laughs> <laughs> two you got yeah. two today you got two students today yeah so so, uh, right, so right, right would... now uh, <laughs> right now the course is being hosted by ash um yeah. so uh, if the, if you go on the ash website the, all the details the course outline is there on the website and you can do do all the registrations from there so sure so i so think that should you can you just share the uh, ma'am i would uh, uh, i would ask you the details for this in later after this session so i'll share it in the description box so if anybody wants to join so they can just click on the link and they can share all right so sure sure uh with this uh, uh my thank questions you, are almost for, uh, for for went very incisive uh, questions yeah thank you yeah. uh thank you guneet firstly thank, thank for you. Uh, um, kind of um, hosting us and thank you so every time i speak to you it's been like many years whether i meet you in chandigarh it's been a it's been a year you know because of covid yeah. but yeah. You know, yeah even if i uh, speak to you on the phone or on zoom there's always so much to learn from you're always so inspiring so motivating uh, so thank you for everything you do and especially thank you for everything that you do in terms of architectural writing also thank you purva for for a very incisive questions and it was a It was fantastic. I am surprised we we talked about one hour and it just just flew so nicely. So much for for this beautiful you know came back into my times upon this book and uh, myself. Uh, I'm going to read it again. Thank you very much and uh, thank you, Gunit, for 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 uh, moderating and the opportunity and the platform. Thank you very much, Purva. Thank you very much, Gunit, and thank thank, thank you. you, viewers and listeners. Thank, thank you, you thank you all thank you sir thank you okay. thank you